heat of the night. Uh, I've got zero heat for the night for this show. Again, like, wasn't atrocious at all. It was just a good show, but nothing really flat out annoyed me or irritated me about the show that I needed to call it out. So I'm good for the night. What about you, Ashton? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really have any heat for the night either. Um, if I were to pick out any kind of nitpicks, it would be the fact that they showed so many things multiple times throughout the show. Like, the fact that the whole... Um, I think it was Rollins Neville thing that happened early on in the show. They ended up showing a complete and total replay of that later on. Oh no, that wasn't it. It was actually the, the Charlotte thing, Charlotte tapping Nikki Bella out. They showed a replay of that later. And it's like, dude, we literally just saw this an hour ago. There's no reason for you to show us this again. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I feel like that's something that raw just kind of does. And I just was more aware of it tonight for some reason, but other than that, no real, no real big complaints. It was an all right show. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. So with that said, let us get right on to our Monday Night Raw review. And we open up the show with Seth Rollins by himself uh, sporting his new T-shirt, uh, You Can't See Me, on the back. And on the front, I think it says, uh, Never Shuts Up. Yep. So I really like that shirt. I thought it was quite cool. It has Seth Rollins' logo on it. Really cool stuff. And he comes to the ring, and he gets kind of a mixed reaction, you know, because Seth is kind of that whiny douchebag kind of heel. it's so crazy, the reaction he got, because at first, when his music first hit, he got a massive pop. And then as the pop kind of died down a little bit, just nuclear heat started to sink in. Like, he is the exact opposite of John Cena at this point. Yeah, he oscillated quite violently between loving and loathing throughout the course of this promo. Um, Really, to me, just to kind of sum it up, you know, I love Rollins's excuse here because he's bragging about the fact that he he broke john cena's nose and he shows too yeah exactly and you know he he shows a still image of it you know he takes us all back to the moment and he says you know the only person that can ever really stop seth rollins is seth rollins so i'm so good the only hindrance to me is myself uh and he said you know the one weakness i showed in that match last week you know was kindness because i didn't feel bad about breaking John Cena's nose. Uh, you know, I've done it to other people in this business before, and John Cena certainly won't be the last guy that I do it to. But, but I saw you know, I saw him in that discomfort, I saw him in that pain. I decided to take pity on him. I had sympathy for him, and I thought it was best to stop the match. The referee obviously wasn't as sympathetic as I was. He allowed the match to continue. And in my moment of sympathy, in my moment of guilt, John Cena caught me, and that is a mistake I will never make again and right there that's all you need to say to completely make up for the fact that he tapped out last week in my opinion exactly just like i loved kevin owens's excuse when he tapped out at battleground it was self-preservation because i have a family to provide for that's how you know because and and like this isn't to go on a rant about wrestling fans it's not that this is about but you hear so many if you want it to be it totally could be well i appreciate that but i I don't want to devolve to devolve to that but you do hear a lot of people on twitter or on Facebook say, oh man, you know that heel, he's totally done. How do you come back from a tab out loss? This is how you come back from a tab out loss. Oh yeah. And honestly, here's my thing, and and I love a lot of guys on our roster right now. This is nothing against anybody in particular. But if you can't come back from a tab out loss, if you can't be that good of a heel, you're behind maybe you're people. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're, maybe you're not as good as you think you are, is yep. is my point. So Rollins shows that he you know, really great moment here for Rollins. And then he makes the bold declaration you know hey cena how about this got a proposition for you how about you and me one more time at SummerSlam, uh wwe world heavyweight champion versus united states champion winner take all and if you've got the grapefruits to you know accept i'll beat you but if you don't show up you forfeit and i'll still beat you so for rollins it's a win-win because he's so confident himself he knows he can beat john cena but he knows he's also so badly injured the likelihood of him answering that challenge Pretty slim until you take into account that, yes, in fact, it is John Cena. So right now, I'm actually going to go with that this match is going to be official at SummerSlam. Probably. Because, I mean, come on, guys. A precedent was established long ago. They make an injury for John Cena seem really bad so that he seems superhuman when he beats that registered schedule. He's going to have such a, you know, well, in WWE's eyes, a great moment when Rollins is just mowing him down on the microphone and he shows up when Rollins thought that he wasn't going to be there. And it's going to be this big thing. So right now I am going with, yeah, we are getting Rollins seen at SummerSlam and going on that fact, I thought this was a great promo by Rollins. I enjoyed it. Definitely one of the highlights of his reign, but it actually doesn't finish here because he ends by saying, you know, since we are in the place 
where where I won my WWE World Heavyweight Championship because I believe they were in California tonight. They're in San Jose, uh, San Jose, San Jose, San Jose, California, and this was also the place of John Cena's very first U.S. Open Challenge. And since I can do anything that John Cena can, but I'm gonna have a WWE World Heavyweight Championship Challenge. Yep. So great tone. To start the show, Ashton, and, and here we get our, our first commercial. And then, you know, we come back from a commercial, we see JoJo in the ring, and she interviews Seth Rollins. And, Ashton, I think you and I both got a kick out of this little interview segment here before the challenge was answered. Yeah, this was just a little quickie. JoJo's just like, Seth, is this legitimate? And Rollins is just like, yeah, it's legitimate. I got 100% confirmation from the authority that I could go out here and do this. But they did add some caveats. And those two are that whoever comes out here has to be under six feet tall and he has to be under 200 pounds. <laughs> so, and then I think Jojo brought something up about El Torito talking about how like he basically wanted to fight El Torito. And he was like, yeah, sure. Bring it on Torito. And Torito's music hit at first, but then it transitioned into somebody else's music that we were not expecting. Oh, oh, you know, I, I will go back to that in just a second, but I just had to mention a line that Rollins said, because to me it was lying. And he's like, wow, you sure are quick, Jojo. And that's no bull. And he did his cackle and I died. I'm like, thank <laughs> you, Seth Rollins. That's so good, too. But yeah, Neville's music hits. And we have this matchup. You, somebody had to check Seth Rollins' cholesterol right then and there because he looked so salty yes. that somebody found a way around the caveats put forth by the authority. And Ashton, just to get into the match just straight away, what I love about this match, and I don't want to jump the gun, but I will say first and foremost, this match helped me with my Raw request. I'll just put that out there straight away. Um, what I love about this is that Neville is currently in a program with Stardust. Mm -hmm. And so you'd think like that would be where all of his energies are focused and devoted. And they but kept they, him relevant outside of that feud. Exactly. They kept him relevant outside of that feud. They know how good he is. They know that he actually had a match with Rollins a few months back, and they took him to the limit. So they know they can make him look fantastic here, and Ashton, boy, did they ever. Oh, you yeah. could not have made Neville look better in this match. No. Well, I mean, technically, you could have just had him win, but... That is true. You could have had him win, and you and I even talked about because I, I know you put forth the possibility, like, John, how much do you want to bet that Neville is going to win the championship? And then the authority comes out, and they say, well, now Neville... Uh, come on, gravity can't even keep you down. How do we know that you're you're less than 200 pounds or something like that? Like, that was actually an exchange that you and I had, and that was what yeah. you told me. And I love that. I did. I thought that was perfectly in line. Or, I mean, another option would be they could have just come out with a scale and make him stand on it in his gear, and it would be like 201. And they would be like, okay, this is all illegitimate. You're disqualified, Neville. You can't win the title. Rollins is still the champion. And that would have been, that would have been great. But I think what I liked about this is that – there really weren't any theatrics, you know, like it was just straight up the heel champion re uh, wrestling the babyface underdog, just just bell to bell. And I mean, Neville got some great high flying spots here Did a corkscrew moonsault at one point or uh, better yet. How great would it have been if they made Neville hold the title while he was standing on the scale? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, because isn't that like 40 pounds of gold, man? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, I get what you're saying. That would have been totally in line, again, with the authority's mindset. And honestly, it almost would have reminded me of something that Ted DiBiase would have done back in the 90s. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because I, I remember when Ted DiBiase, he did the whole, okay, kid, if you dribble the basketball 100 times, I'll give you $100. And I the think kid it was, was actually like, only 10 times, and he knocked it out of his hands after six. Oh, was it? Yeah, or no, it was after nine, because he kicked his foot because he knew the kid was going to get it. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, I'm sorry, little boy. And the, I think the kid was actually crying. Teddy Biazzi was just reveling in that kid's tears. So yeah. great heel, great heel. Now we um, know where you learned your ways from, John. Absolutely, absolutely. But <laughs> yeah, dude, they went out. They had an amazing wrestling match, and they made Neville look so good. Yeah. They have two spots in this match. The first one, I actually prefer to the second one. The first one being the near fall attempt, because Good God, did that look like a three count. And I think everybody both out of the seat. And commentary, for as much flack as we give commentary, I have to give them credit, and I can't believe I'm saying this, especially JBL here, because he was arguing Neville's case. Now, I know that's counterintuitive to JBL. He's supposed to be the heel commentator. But I can forgive him this one time because it felt like a legitimately big moment, and JBL, I think, was really selling it. Yep. So I really like that. The second point, he actually got off the red arrow, yep. and you and I were losing it. And as the referee's making the count, 
Thank goodness for you, Ashton, because I was so absorbed in the moment, I didn't even notice Seth's foot on the middle rope. Oh, yeah. I was looking. I was like, oh, my God, are they actually going to do this? And then I saw the referee didn't even count one, and, and Seth's foot was already on the rope. So I was thinking either A, the ref's going to stop his count and point it out, or B, he was going to count to three, and then we were going to re- get a review, and Seth's foot was on the rope, so he's going to keep the title. Absolutely. And you know what? I almost would have gone with the latter because to hear that crowd pop only to take it away would have been great heat for Seth, which is why I think you had all the machinations with the authority anyway, because yeah. they were so behind Neville that to cheat him out of a- any kind of way would have been great heat for the champion. But you know what, but- though? This did still feel like he got cheated out of it because it wasn't Rollins's amazing ring awareness that caused him to get that foot on the rope. It was Neville being overzealous in the pin and pulling Rollins's legs over too far. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This is the second straight time. Well, not straight because they didn't fight weeks back. You know, it's funny. It's funny because actually, if you think about it, when Seth opened the show, he said the only person in the WWE that can stop me or that can slow me down is myself. And I think that we can repeat that exact same thing for Neville tonight. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because he basically beat himself by being so overzealous with that pin that he pulled Seth's leg up onto the middle rope and that caused the pin to get broken up because of a rope break. This is the second time that Neville has been in the ring with Seth Rollins and both those times Seth Rollins, you know, was the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. I mean, need I remind everybody, this match in particular was a WWE World Heavyweight Championship match and he hung in there with Rollins and this particular time he had Rollins beat. I think not once, but twice. Yeah. Um, so anybody who wants to say like, oh, this feud at Stardust isn't good enough or, oh, Neville's this, that, I personally don't want to hear it. Because when you go to distance with the current world champion and you almost have a guy like John Cena beat, Neville's going to be just fine. He could do a feud with Stardust. He could do a feud with uh, Bad News Barrett after that. I'm going to remember these matches and I'm going to know that Neville's going to go on to bigger and better things. And And this is what I wish they would do more. You know, with a lot of their talents on Neville's particular level, because this was such a great moment. Yeah, this was th- th- like stuff like this reminded me of like back in 2004 when Shelton Benjamin made his raw debut against Triple H. You know, just just those big matches between two guys on two completely different levels. But either just the, the guy on the lower level comes out and he gets the win like Benjamin did or he comes really close but looks amazing for it like Neville did. This was an incredible opener. Loved yeah. it. It was. I mean. I would even go as far as to say that even though it was the first match of the night, it was the match of the night. Oh, without question. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, when, again. And the crazy thing is we had this great match, and then there really wasn't any kind of a break. We went straight from this match into our second match of the night.